2021 Volkswagen Golf GTI Track Test Review, Mark it up. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. When an automaker invites you out to drive a redesigned model, on a track, back to back with its predecessor, you go. These are rare opportunities that allow you to really benchmark how far a new product has come in a controlled environment. So when Volkswagen called us up and said, hey, MK8 GTI, MK7 GTI, M1 Concourse in Michigan. You in? We leapt at the opportunity. What we didn't expect was that a bizarre tire choice would mar this chance to see how VW has improved the world's leading and original hot hatchback. After half a day of tracking and autocrossing, it's pretty clear the new GTI is better than the old, but this experience did more to show us the value of a good set of tires than an upgraded five-door hatch. Let's cut right to the chase. The MK7 GTIs we were testing wore Bridgestone Potenza S001, Max Performance Summer, tires at all four corners. These are the original equipment for the current car. The MK8 GTI wore the same tires, on the back axle. Up front, Volkswagen fitted the Bridgestone RE71R, a 200 Treadwear Extreme Performance tire that is widely considered the gold standard for competitive autocross. It wasn't until we'd already completed a lap of the autocross course in each car, realizing that the performance disparity was way too dramatic, that we looked at the tires. According to Volkswagen, it had been loaning out these Euro-spec MK8s to media across the country, including Motor1.com, on the factory rubber. But when it came time to prep the cars for this program, the company couldn't source new tires for all six of the vehicles. We'll give VW the benefit of the doubt here, because COVID supply chain issues are real. But there was no other tire available, guys? The stock GTI rubber's performance isn't even on the same planet as the RE71R. Unsurprisingly, the newer GTI and its ultra-sticky front rubber blew the last generation model out of the water. We ran the older hatchback around a short autocross course in 37.9 seconds. The MK8 did the same thing in 35.9. That's a huge gap on such a short run. It was a similar story on M1 Concourse's 1.5-mile circuit. VW released us at 20-second increments on the track, but the MK8 drivers were closing the distance on the MK7 drivers within four laps. The simple truth is that fitting the RE-71 rupees to the improved GTI allowed it to carry dramatically more speed into corners, offer far higher lateral limits, Although the disparity in front, rear grip did make it feel a good bit looser than the MK7, and more easily put power down on corner exit. It wasn't even fair. Comparing the old GTI to the new is a futile exercise when there's a thumb on the scale for the MK8. But while the aggressive tires largely ruined our chance to make direct comparisons, the overall experience still revealed some exciting things about the new GTI. Weirdly, the most satisfying thing was the MK8's a brake pedal. While we criticized the braking experience during our first drive of a Euro-spec GTI earlier this year, driving it back-to-back -back with last year's car reveals a more progressive, predictable pedal. Even if we had matching OE tires, we'd have felt more confident slowing the newer car down, simply because of how well-tuned the controls are.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.